Yeah. Today we're going over this guy right here. This is the Cox Arms Wolf pistol. This is an AR pistol in 5.56. I put roughly in the ballpark of 500 rounds through it so far, so it's not a high round count, but it's definitely enough to get a good feel for the AR, how it feels, what's it about all that stuff. So this right here is made by a manufacturer in Santan Valley, Arizona called Cox Arms USA. This AR is not just an AR that was pieced together by them, they actually manufacture these. So they have these handguards. This handguard right here is their design. I put a little pick rail right here, don't worry about that. This hand, this handguard right here is actually their design and it's well thought out and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. Same as the receiver set right here, it's a billet receiver. Um, their own design and very well built, very thick receiver as well. Cool lines, overall just a very pretty gun. You'll notice that trigger is an aftermarket trigger, definitely a nice upgrade. And then you have more of a vertical style grip right here, not that typical AR-15 really canted grip. And then right over here you have a nice muzzle brake. Again, we're gonna go into the details about all this stuff, all these parts in just a little bit. First, let's look at some more shooting footage. That is a flat shooter. Really? Very soft. Are we ready? Leo, are you ready, Steve? Ready, sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not bad, right? No. I don't know what magic they did, but that shoots fine as well. Showing with the AR is this ETS magazine. Um, shout out to ETS there, my channel sponsors, and I appreciate them. They have the speed loaders. Speed loaders are awesome. It's like, especially for rifle magazines, all that stuff, they're quick. They're really nice to use. So with these reviews, I have to start on one side and I work my way up to the other. It helps me keep track of what we talked about so it doesn't get all scrambled. Right here in the back, this is the Gearhead Works tail hook v2 or mod 2 button right here so you can pull it press this in then you can adjust your different positions what's comfortable for you this is kind of cool you can hit this button right here on the side push that in and then this thing folds down and you actually put your arm in there if you want to do some single-handed shooting actually makes it kind of nice for my little short videos that i do because I can actually use this to brace the gun so I can film with one hand and shoot with the other. Use the brace how you want to use it. All right, so right here on the grip, this is the uh, MFT. This is one of the more vertical style grips. So like I said, it's not like the standard AR-15. This one is more vertical, which is nice. We'll talk about the trigger in a second. This is an ambidextrous safety selector. And that safety selector is reversible, so you can either use it as a 90 degree safety selector or a 45 degree. When he made this gun for me to test, I had him do a 45 degree. I just love that short throw. Nice and quick, that's it. Kind of reminiscent of like that Radiant style 45 degree selector. So let's talk about one of my favorite parts about this AR right here. This is an ELF trigger, and this one is the match grade adjustable trigger, which is absolutely incredible. Let's take a look. So if you look right here, this is the drop-in trigger. This is the assembly in here, obviously, but you see this screw right here. 
this is adjustable. So you turn this, you can change that trigger pull with I believe half pound increments. There's a little spring and a knockout or a notch right on the screw. So you don't have to worry about that changing as you shoot. When you turn it and set it, it clicks in and that spring holds it in place. If you wanna shoot it at a three pound, 2.5 pound, all the way up to four pound, I believe, you can adjust that just by turning the screw, which is really nice. You can really change if you want that to be more of a purposeful, heavier trigger pull, or if you just wanna do something really light, like a match competition light style trigger. I've become really spoiled with triggers. I um, Just all the cool triggers I've tried so far, it, I just love triggers, and this is a really great feeling trigger. Just for an example, here's a trigger pull. Doesn't take much, and the reset is nothing. Look at that, tiny little reset. Very smooth, and that reset, has my favorite type of reset and very similar to like the blackout defense style reset. It actually helps nudge that trigger forward during the reset so it helps with that firing. It helps you find that reset. You barely have to let off on that trigger to get that reset to engage. So just a very fast, very comfy feeling trigger. They do several different types of Serico options and the one I wanted was this olive drab. I absolutely love OD, green, just like these Gators. Sunglasses, these are the Gators Ballistic Specters. If you guys wanna look into these, they're in the description below. But yeah, this olive drab, OD green, um, Serico, very thick. It's been thrown around the truck bed a little bit, shot quite a bit, and there are no scratches, nothing super visible except for right here up on the handguard. Again, this is just a little Magpul M-Lock pick rail attachment that I put on it. This does not come with the gun. Um, the receiver itself is very thick. It's a billet receiver, very thick construction, very thick material. So is made with such tight tolerances that there is zero wiggle or wobble between the upper and lower receiver. They didn't have to use any kind of tensioning device, anything like that to reduce that wobble. So those tight tolerances, obviously, it, it has this a very solid feel to it. On the handguard right up here, there's two little ears on the side of this handguard that attach to the upper receiver. So it gives you a good indexing for your pick rail on top. There's no twisting, anything like that. These are made for each other. The handguard is made for the upper receiver. Upper receiver is made for the lower receiver. It fits together just, it fits together nicely. You can see there's a little Cox logo right here with that crosshair. Other than that, just a really nice compact package as well. So right down the side here, you have a low profile gas block that has been pinned. Um, these little set screws have been pinned to the gas block. And then right on front, right on the tip of the barrel right here, you have a VG6 Precision. This one is the Gamma, the Gamma 556. This thing is absolutely obnoxious. It throws fireballs sideways, um, but it's effective. This is one of the flattest, flattest shooting ARs I have ever fired. And shooting this thing has just been an absolute pleasure. So you can see the way that gamma looks. You have some holes in the bottom drilled. You got the side slots right here. And then, of course, you have some of these slots on top as well. But this thing does a great job at redirecting those gases sideways. And it really helps you get a good really helps keep that muzzle down. It's literally on target, very comfy shooter, very light recoil impulse. The barrel itself is a 10.5 inch, 5.56. It's a one in seven twist, 4150 uh, Cromali barrel. It's very, st it's a stout little barrel and you can see, it's kind of hard to see in the pictures, but you can see where it's built up right by that gas block in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. I won't spend too much time talking about it. The handguard is 10 inches. The Barrel is 10.5 inches. They're, they're a great fit together. This does have a carbine gas system. So I know some AR pistols have a pistol length gas system. This one is a carbine length gas system. So it comes right up to the front of that handguard just about. And then 
inside let's look at the guts again one more time so this right here does have an upgraded h2 buffer in it and a heavier buffer spring they've tuned this gun to work perfectly with the, the gas length with the port size the gas port size and the buffer system it runs amazing the way it is from factory so the bolt carrier group right here bolt carrier group is a heavy duty style bolt carrier group kind of reminiscent with the more premium AR-15s. I, I don't know the manufacturer of this bolt carrier group but it's a heavy duty BCG and there's less contact points on it. This is magnetic particle inspected. It's MPI. Charging handle is very nice. You have a good thick charging handle right in the back. Ambidextrous. Overall with the package and the, the theory behind this gun. Let me, let me put the gun back together real quick. Not bad. Before we continue on with the video, I just want to give you guys a heads up. I'm just about nearing that 150,000 subscriber mark. So I want to thank you guys all so much for supporting my channel, subscribing and watching my videos. It means a lot to me and obviously I do this because I want to get feedback and engagement from the community. So thank you all so much for supporting me this entire time and to any new subscribers out there, thank you for subscribing. I'd love to have you on board and I'm going to be doing a giveaway soon. So. I don't know what's gonna be. I'm talking to a couple companies to help sponsor the giveaway, but it's probably gonna be some pretty nice stuff. I'm gonna to talk to some of my favorite companies that I've worked with in the past and um, some of the stuff that I've reviewed because I'd, um, there's some cool stuff out there and I think I can do a really cool prize package for you all. So just keep that in the back of your head. Um, don't know when that's gonna happen, but sometime after I hit that 150. 150,000 mark. So, so another heads up. True Shot Gun Club is gonna be doing a part two of this video. We're gonna do a round table style discussion. I love doing those with True Shot because they really get into it. Um, they talk a little more nerdy uh, history behind things. Uh, John and Kurt over there. So, keep an eye out for True Shot Gun Clubs part two of this video for a little more in-depth discussion. Theory behind this: When I talked to the owner at Cox Arms USA. Um, he said he wanted to make an AR that has all the bells and whistles from factory. He doesn't want to, he didn't want to make a gun that is lower in price and you're going to have to start upgrading parts to make it what it is. This thing is built to be this. It's not just a standard cheap AR. This thing encompasses everything you might want to do for an upgrade. There's always more, there's always other upgrades you might want to do, but this thing runs amazing right out of the box. This kind of has that buy once, cry once theory behind it. From the selector switch, to the anti-walk pins, to the bulk, the upgraded heavy duty bolt carrier group, to the buffer weight, the buffer spring, the trigger is amazing. Um, handguard fits perfectly on it. It's all lightweight. It's This comes in just over five and a half pounds, just around five and a half pounds total weight without this optic. And muzzle device is very effective. And I believe they're actually gonna be starting to do 13.9 inch pin and weld ARs as well. I haven't actually experienced any malfunctions or issues with this gun yet, which is awesome. So let's talk about what you're supposed to do with this gun when you get it. Now this gun does come with two magazines, comes with a little constitution, and it comes with a carry case, carrying case, trigger lock, all that stuff. Now with the AR, there is a 150 round break-in period. Now that break-in period, they told me that they're expecting to see things like failure to feeds and failure to extracts. I'm thankful to say during my break-in period, none of that happened. It did not have any issues feeding, no issues extracting, which is awesome. I was also told that this AR is not meant, this AR is not meant to run steel, um, just because steel, there's a different type of pressure on that round since it's a harder case than your standard brass cases. There's like little, there's little gaps inside, microscopic gaps that will release pressure when that round is fired. With the heavier spring weight, heavier buffer, all that stuff, that basically means that this thing might not cycle. I'm happy to say I ran about 100 rounds of the Wolf 223, the steel stuff through it without a single malfunction. Again, it ran perfectly with the steel. It ran right through its break-in period and the thing is going strong.
I love it. This is one of the most fun ARs I have played with and have been able to spend some time with. Again, keep an eye out for True Shot Gun Club's part two of this, and we're gonna be talking about this a little more in depth on a round table type discussion. Hope you all like this video. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think of this? Uh, price tag is gonna be just around that 2000 mark, maybe 1700 to 1900, depending on if there's any sales or deals going on. But right now I wanna say they're about 18 to 1900 online right now. But like I said, with all the upgrades you're getting, and this is not just a Franken rifle, this rifle is a Cox Arms Wolf 556. This is its own gun, it's not pieced together, it's built to be this. That sounds so dumb when I say it, but it is what it is. <laughs> it's a great gun. Thank you all so much. Hope you all like this video. I'll see you guys later.